Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to be talking about children's books and I'm going to take you a little bit behind the scenes and show you a little bit of the process of how I'm currently creating my own or attempting to create my own and yeah let's get into it. Okay, so before we go through a little bit of my process of where I am right now with the children's book, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background in terms of how I got to this point and why I decided to do this. So a couple of years ago, I came across Ross Tran's um, comic book called Nima. And when I actually got my hands on it, I was quite inspired to create my own comic book. Um, but not having any prior experience, I actually did quite a lot. And yeah, I got to a point where I was actually struggling quite a bit. The more and more I got into my comic book, the more and more I actually struggled and realized how hard it was. And then um, fast forward to 2023 Comic Con last year, a friend of mine in the comic book industry actually mentioned to me, instead of actually trying to create a comic book with no experience, why don't you just try and create a children's book first and then maybe learn from the process. And I thought that actually made a lot of sense. So that's where I am at this point, trying to come up with my own book. And yeah, let's get into this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is take you guys through my slideshow, which is um, a slide that I created where I've put all my research and planning in, and I'll take you through that. Just so that you know that this is gonna be like a vlog type of process in terms of video. So. Um, I'll show you where I am at this point and then I'll create another video um, down the line as I continue and make progress with the book. Um, I don't know when I will post that but I mean we'll see as as I get an opportunity to work on the book I'll do that. So you must you've seen um, in the intro I've sh basically showed the cover which is Monsters in the Dark but I'm technically calling this project M because I don't necessarily have an official name for the book so um, as I continue with the process of creating the story, or actually I've actually finished the story, but as I uh, continue with the, the project, um, if I come up with a better name that's more suitable, um, I'm willing to change it. So yeah, I'll take you through that. So I actually started this project 2023 March. That's when I got the idea when I actually wanted to like create this. Um, and yeah, to this point I've done about half of the book. I still consider it to be a first draft because the illustrations is very rough at this point, you'll see. Um, but yeah, I just put some mock-ups together just to show you guys, give you guys a sense of what the book might look like in future. And yeah, we'll, we'll go through the entire process. But before we go through all of that, I just want to give you, for those that actually uh, start in this process, um, or those of you that actually want to create a children's book on your own, uh, I just added some of the research that I did myself, so I just wanted to share that, so in case you guys want to do, use it. Okay, so what we're going to run through um, is, I just, this is the contents that I originally have. I've obviously like blocked out some of the things that I won't be talking about. Um, like the overall book plan, because I had a series put in place. Um, I was also just doing some research on like the roles of the authors, illustrators, editors, and publishers, and then the quality of the books. Like I, at this point, it's more about like what I can print versus like what I can get the publisher to do. Um, and I'm pretty happy with like doing it myself at this point. I can always like work on the quality of the book down the line. And then I also went through like types of books. Uh, so we'll discuss that a bit and like why I chose the specific format that I'm currently doing. And then when I was learning this process, I was obviously streaming this on, I was streaming the entire process on Twitch. And all of the, all of the work that you're about to see, I did everything live on Twitch. And there was a lot of like people that came in that spoke certain terms and stuff that I wasn't aware of. So I did, I just like jotted down like a few of the terms that I thought was important. And you'll see I use it actually in the process as we go along. And I speak about the target audience. I'll give you guys a, a rough idea of what the plot looks like. Um, this is probably the one that's in this slide is probably like a work in progress one. It's not the, the final one that I currently have. Then I'll show you guys like how I cleaned up the plot to like um, create more scripts per page. Um, uh, there's some character designs, profiles, some storyboards, and then 
maybe we can at the end we can actually look at my timesheet and then I'll show you like how I documented everything um, throughout the entire process. So first thing you need to do is what type of book do you want to create um, when you are creating this project? So I had no idea there was a, a range of different um, children's books going into this. I just knew that you get your picture books, which is um, your picture books that shows uh, visuals, nice visuals. I knew I wanted to do that because of my illustration background. Um, but yeah, I never really took into account the word counts and all of that. But yeah, as I got into this, kind of made a lot of sense. Um, uh, there's your board books, your early picture books, your picture books, old picture books, which the three types of picture books I also didn't really know about. Um, but yeah, I'll discuss it a bit now. Uh, chapter books and middle grade. Um, I did kind of like break this up a little bit. So yeah, so initially I've always also had this idea that if I create a children's book, which I know that I want to create a picture book, um, it would be cool to accompany it with board books to introduce the younger age groups into the characters and like make smaller stories which I thought was cool but yeah so you get these board books which are generally for the kids um, I actually have this bluey one funny enough um, let me just show you guys um, and these board books are quite hard and they're quite cool um, but yeah so board books generally have a low word count they generally from what I've seen, they're generally just introductions to a lot of things like numbers, animals, sounds, objects, the alphabet, all of those type of things. So for your zero to three year olds, just to get them uh, associated with what things look like, what things sound like, etc. And that's why they're also quite hard, um, I'm assuming, um, so that the younger kids can't tear them. Then you get your most popular form of children's books. Um, which everybody knows is your picture books. So I didn't actually know that you can divide them into these different groups. Um, I found that out through the early stages of my research. But yeah, so you get to these different types, all based on different age groups and word count. Um, I just gave an idea here of, of what the inside of a picture book could look like. And then here's just some samples of what they look like as well. Very popular, everybody knows what picture books look like. Um, but yeah, so that's basically it. Chapter books was an interesting one because I've also had this idea that I've always wanted to do like um, As I was creating my book actually, which you'll see later on um, I thought it would be interesting to take actually tackle all Different areas so like do board books introduce them to my stories and then create a picture book Which would be like the main bulk of the story and then maybe like continue and create a chapter book But later on we I expand on the story um, I thought that could be interesting but chapter books is quite cool um, uh, it's introductory to early reading so children like starting reading like paragraphs and full sentences basically tackle these books and I also noticed that there's quite a lot of different types of early readers like you can see on the right here um, there are ones that don't have as many words compared to the one that's open on the left which has a bit more words and then the last one you'll see is middle grade um, now where I'm from, this Goosebump series was very popular back in my day and I think they're still quite popular today. And yeah, this is pretty much the last stage you read before you actually go into like your normal books. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, um, there's quite a lot to read in these middle grade books, which I think is quite cool as well. I don't think I even want to get that far, but uh, yeah, they're, quite, they're quite, um, quite interesting. I love Goosebumps growing up. Yeah, so those are a little bit brief about the types of books. So then what did I originally want to create? So mine is kind of like a mixture of everything, um, but it does kind of fall into like uh, older picture book category. And initially I wanted it to be for like six, seven year olds, but the more I developed the story, I realized it's actually for a slightly older group. Um, so the story starts off quite simple and then it gets a bit more complex as it introduces other concepts along the line but yeah we'll see how that goes um, but mine is an older picture book type of category based on what I have at this point point. and then I kind of got a, uh, an idea of what I wanted to look like on the inside which is not like one-liners but it could be like two or three sentences per page 
um, and a mixture of like wine lighters as well um, I guess um, but I do did want to have a little bit of a narrative to the story as the character, main character goes through the, the story okay then terminologies um, these are just some basic uh, terminologies that I came across like log lines, manuscript storyboards, spots, vignettes single page and double page bridge and then uh, page in it um, which is a term that I didn't know but I actually I've always done the process I just didn't know what it was called um, but yeah so log lines are basically just a line or a brief description which could be a one sentence of what the plot is is happening so it's like key plots moving the story along um, I'll show you how I did that uh, manuscript is basically handwritten typed version of the document so it's the whole story just written out storyboards are the way I like to explain storyboards is taking the manuscript and then creating um, visuals for the manuscript. So like creating like scenes roughly in terms of what, what's basically playing out in each scene. And then uh, let me just ignore spots and vignettes at the moment because I have another slide for that. But single and double spreads, I think they're quite self-explanatory, whether the visuals on a single page or on a double page. And then page eight is basically just laying out your content per page just so that you get an idea of what uh, the layout would look like um, so spots and vignettes uh, people describe them differently from what i've seen online but this is how i understand it i understand spots to be just basic illustrations of the character in motion or doing something specific um, with no background generally because that's how i do how i've started doing it and then vignettes um, are more like similar to that but it has a scene so it's like smaller scenes or multiple scenes um, placed in the in on the page so yeah so my target audience initially like I said I wanted it to be a bit younger so that parents could read it to the kids but um, the more I developed the story I kind of enjoyed playing around with the idea that the kid could actually go into this world on their own and yeah in order to do that the kid will need to be able to have basic reading skills and that's why i kind of like changed my target audience to from initially a younger group to a more six to ten year olds and then i just wrote down like some notes a while ago of like the issues that i have with uh with my book so like problems with my story the story seems to be too complicated for the younger audience so how do i get to seven to ten year olds perhaps um and then i was asking myself questions like would they like this type of story? Um, I researched some movies for age groups and it made a lot more sense that I bump up the age group um, based on the story that I had. <clears throat> and then also the last thing that I did is uh, what I created felt more like a comic book but in the format of a picture book. And then I wasn't sure if that was like a good thing or not but then I also thought like oh, this is the way I'm doing it. Um, it feels right and I'm just going to continue with it at this point. And then in terms of visual languages and the books that I got the most inspiration from, these are the four. Um, so Grey Legs, I just came across like this year actually um, from Dina Norland uh, on a YouTube channel and I watched quite a bit of it and I enjoyed that process. So that's actually going to be a new inspiration. So technically I've never actually came across it with everything that you're about to see here. I actually didn't see your book. Um, but yeah, the biggest inspiration that I had was RuneWorld. Um, so RuneWorld, I came across many years ago and I've always like checked it out online and I've liked the art style and always wanted to create something with it. And then um, Anush Said, which created or illustrated and perfectly designed, um, she has a YouTube channel and quite a lot of content on children's book creation. And when I came across her channel, I actually bought this book um which i have here and yeah i just like lint but how the layouts were i actually drew certain stuff and i thought it was quite interesting and then i'm a big fan of bluey um and i really love bluey's art style and i kind of want to do incorporate like um bluey's backgrounds and how simple the art style was initially i wanted to do that don't know if i'm still gonna go that way um but yeah it was a big inspiration early on Okay, so then I was thinking about like the purpose of the book and what do I actually want to teach. Um, so before we actually do this, maybe we should go to the next slide. So this is where it all like basically started. Um, 
when I was thinking about children's book, I was thinking about like, how could I create a formula um, that could could tackle something negative and turn it into a positive. So I kind of created like this, I was just sitting one night, just writing on, on my iPad and I came up with this idea of like tackling like various things, like for example, lies. And then how could I, how could I speak about like, a, how could I write a story about a kid that lies or has little white lies and then finds the confidence to speak about the truth? Or how could I tackle a specific fear that a child has and then turn it into a positive and how could the child end up um, becoming courageous and that's kind of like the story sword line that i picked there's a lot of different other ones that i i did but yeah so i kind of like um wrote the story based on the concept of like fear and courage and that's kind of what i wanted to do with the book um moving forward so lessons of the book um they're obviously subliminal but i mean yeah i wanted to kind of like add them so like speaking about fear and anxiety and um, fear, so like develop the ability to learn about yourself and identify your weaknesses and work on improving it. So my character is aware of his specific fear in the story. So the character's name is Ray, which you'll meet shortly. And Ray showcases his awareness that he's afraid of the dark. And the story kind of develops and explains, or he gets the courage to um, overcome his fear through certain narratives. And then the other one is anxiety of not of learning to judge or assuming um, things before they happen. So Ray goes through certain parts of the book where he, he assumes certain things might happen, and and in that assumption he becomes very anxious and scared and all of that. But then it isn't what he believes it to be. So he he, he creates this fear around everything, um, and things don't actually turn out that way. So yeah, so. Yeah, the example that I wrote there is that Ray imagines the monsters, which I call Moonus. Uh, we will we'll discuss that a bit later. Um, he believes them to be scary, but they're not really. And then he's afraid of a possible future that might not ever happen. So it's like wasted energy. Those are just like notes that I had in my notebook. And the positive things was like overcoming his fear, becoming courageous. So he does that through a deeper desire of wanting to help his friends. So. Yeah, so he sees situations where his friends are in danger and he's, even though he's afraid, he, he identifies that he needs to assist and he pushes through that with his courage. And then, yeah, in that process, he's helping caring and he becomes courageous and overcomes his fear, unknowingly perhaps. Then the log lines that we spoke about earlier. So I have this idea of the story and I always find the easiest way to do it is to take the key plots of your story. So just write on a, like do a mind map or flow chart of like key plots and, and key, key moments within the story that drives the story flow forward. And then once you have that, you basically just jot down like in sentence by sentence point. So you guys can see here the sections by sections and I basically just write in the story. So this was my very first attempt at, at writing the story um, in this format. So I basically just wrote it down line by line of how the story uh, unfolds. So yeah, you guys can pause the video here and read it if you want to. Um, excuse my bad grammar or all of that. But yeah, you get an idea of how I initially started this process. And then it, it continues. And then I had this idea that I was gonna end the book here, but I didn't, I just continued. <clears throat> and then I was gonna, ex um, elaborate on the lessons or tackle different lessons. Um, so I was gonna emphasize on certain themes and concepts that today's putting his fear aside to help the mooners. Um, and then I kind of like, kind of like, the story I tried to like get in a way where I could use those themes and have certain um, script or like the character saying certain stuff that also like emphasizes that. So yeah, so I wrote some of that, that key points down. And then, yeah, so then I had this idea of book two. So yeah, I'm not gonna give away everything. So that's why I blurred this part. But yeah, basically I continue the story and then it ends at the point where he solves the specific issue at the end. And then, yeah, so that's basically how I created the story in a nutshell with the log lines, just writing it down in line by line. And then you'll see what I do with those line by line sections as I go along. But before I continued creating the script and, 
and doing like the specific pages and stuff and weather script. I did have an idea of what I wanted the world to look like and I did some research on that but I felt like it was important for me to visually see these characters in certain environments or interacting with each other or themselves um, before I could continue. So that's when I actually started like sketching like what I thought today would be look like and um, just to get an idea because I knew his visuals would um, kind of like drive the story forward in certain areas as well. Um, this, is, this is Ray, you'll see another visual down the line. This was basically an idea of transformation. I did want to kind of like have elements of gamifying um, the, the, the character. Um, like I have a level 1 version of a level 2 with a flashlight and a headband, level 3 with a cape. But yeah, you can see the character design developed over time. Like this is the initial idea where he's afraid and courageous and then kind of like just developed into like an older version and then a more anime version and then where we are today, which is this version here. So I had multiple attempts at like playing around with color and stuff and initially I wanted Ray to have like an iconic type of hair color that people will identify oh that boy with the purple hair the boy with the orange hair whatever but then i thought no um i thought it would make more sense to choose something that's more generic or something that um, children can actually um identify with so for example i went with like a yellow sweater and like a pair of jeans and vans um because i thought like most children could probably get their hands on that and if they ever wanted to cosplay the character um it would be very possible to do so um, instead of like having to like change the hair color etc so i went to something a bit more basic then also played around with like crocs you can see here and and vans and all of that and then i like did expression sheets to like see what they would look like in various scenarios yeah and then moving on to like um currently the character's name is called mr twinkle so this is ray's sidekick and uh, mr twinkles is like his cat so there are, there are other characters in the story, like the ones that you'll see next, which are the Mooners, which are like the monsters of the story. Um, and they, they have a black version of themselves and also a light version. And that's why I kind of initially went with um, Mr. Twinkles or the cat being a black so that the cat could kind of like mimic the, the Mooners and they look similar. And that kind of like drew, I use that to kind of like draw on certain narratives so that they could relate to each other and all of that. But as the story developed, um, I kind of went back to like a ginger cat. Um, and that's something different. Um, also like there's different ideas, like eventually I like found these different, uh, uh, I watched Bluey quite a bit and I like the idea that, that Bluey was kind of like a humanoid type of character. Um, and so initially I was gonna make it that, um, Mr. Twinkles was just an ordinary cat, but I did kind of like, I'm kind of drawn out to the, the part where in the other world, which you'll see, um, the animals and pets become like humanoid versions of themselves. And because of that, I thought of a few other stuff. And so you can see like the visuals of the characters were like kind of pushing the narratives in a way. Okay, so like the stars of the show or the, 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 the stars of the book are the monsters. And in this story, I created these creatures called Mooners, which over here, you can see are these cute little creatures that are created from light. So Mooners um, come from the word moon. I just made it up. I don't know if it exists or whatever, but yeah, I'm, I called them Mooners. And they were the list these creatures from another world that come to our world and they get misunderstood as um they get misunderstood as like monsters but uh, the reason they come to our world is for our light sources so i don't necessarily mention these things in the book but uh, it's kind of like a bio thing that i'll do like on youtube at some point like explaining the world and how certain stuff work but yeah so they come to our world and they either looking for certain light sources because we have different light sources because they need light to survive that's their source of energy um, but on their world they have multiple moons that they receive um, energy from but yeah that's not something that will really be mentioned in the book but i'm just giving an idea and then basically the idea is moons are constantly happy and all of that um, 
but there is like a, a royalty within there's a monarch within the mooners world and if and there's multiple moons but in the story certain stuff happened and um mooners are generally only positive creatures but because of certain events within the story um that positive energy can be kind of like negated and if that happens they become what i kind of call darklings so they basically morph into like evil versions of themselves which you can see here and yeah the story basically revolves around ray going into their world trying to like solve or defeat like the bad monsters and yeah how he overcomes that is like a different that's like part of the story and then i kind of like play once i had an idea of like um, the main character Ray, the his sidekick Mr. Twinkles, which the name will most likely change, and um, the Moon is. I kind of like wanted to play around with ideas of like what the what the cover could look like. And the one on the left was initial, my first initial um, take on it, and it was like Ray entering the closet, and then like you have like these Moon is like hiding all over. And I was, it's like like a very first draft and I was very like inspired by Aku from Samurai Jack and I kind of like came up with this type of visual. But then like as I created the story and as I went along I thought like a vital point within the story was the first time Ray uh, gains, gets courage. So, um, which is this part here. The first time he actually feels a bit brave is like when he has this flashlight and he's ready to like tackle um, the monsters. So I thought that was like a cool scene and I kind of like just like threw Monsters in the Dark on top there and I thought, oh, maybe that makes a cool cover and that's currently like the, the interim cover at this point. Okay, so the page nets or um, the scenes, you can see at some point um, after I'm like done with creating the scenes and, uh, sorry, done creating the log lines, I kind of wanted to get an idea of what it would look like on different pages. So that's what I did next was I took the the different log lines and put them on different pages. So you can kind of see here. And then I kind of like came up with the code where I was like, green was like, okay, I'm happy with that page. Yellow was like a work in progress and red was something that needed to change. So I kind of like gave myself that format like moving forward. And I continued that until I was done with the book. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So you'll see like, for example, Ray, Ray hides his head under the blankets in fear of the darkness. Um, that could be, uh, we'll just check a bit later, but um, that's like the idea of the scene. And then the, the bottom part is just some extra notes that I put there. Like Ray believes that there are monsters in his closet under his bed outside the window and are lurking in all the dark spaces of his room. So those are just like extra notes I gave myself to um, when I got to the point of, of drawing or illustrating these pages, then at least I had some a bit more context of what my idea was at that point. Um, another example here is I knew in page six, I knew I wanted to do spots when Ray was looking for the flashlight. So it says here, Ray searches all over looking for the flashlight. He wakes up the next morning, Saturday, um, searching the house, looking for a flashlight. Yeah, so you get the idea of what these scenes kind of look like. And then I had this idea of like breaking the book up into like specific themes. So um, as I was writing the story, I was kind of like trying to get these themes across as I was going along. So like page one to fifth was identifying his weakness and finding a solution to it. And then like the middle of the book was him conquering this weakness and then um, building the courage up to like conquer that weakness. And then the end was of like using what he's learned to help others. So those are kind of like the themes I kind of like identified and the ones I wanted to tackle within the book. And now what I'm about to show you now is like me taking those scenes and then putting a visual um, of what I wanted the book to kind of look like before I start the illustrate, illustration pro, uh, process. Now this is a good example of that, like the start of the book. Um, I kind of like wrote this little bit of the script and like what I wanted to be written in terms of what you would read and then what the visual could potentially look like. Um, so I did do this initially, but as I was doing this, I kind of like removed the research and put my um, illustration there. So you'll see that. So some of the research you won't see here, but you will get the, the images uh, that I created. 
So for example, here page one, it says, ever since I started sleeping in my own room, I could feel something lurking in the dark. So that's like the in introduction. And then the visual is, you just see the closet, which is, um, the closet, you'll see I speak about the closet a bit later because I wanted it to look a bit unique. But yeah, so it's basically just the closet, uh, which is gonna be a spot. And that's how the story starts. Then the story breaks down, you can see here I drew my, my own, added my own illustrations here. And I'm basically just plotting out the script for each page and what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, you can see me working out um, what I want the visuals to look like. So yeah, I have a, a kid that I didn't draw yet, but a kid like going to his parents' room, um, afraid he's sleeping next to his dad, etc. Some of these visuals I took out. But you can see how I was planning as I went along. Yeah, and you can see how like, I got this, this scene from Naruto where Naruto like, um, tightened his headband. So I kind of like used that as a reference. And then I saw this image of, of Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid like training. And I kind of wanted to add something like that of the kid like training, preparing himself, gaining courage with his cat. So like fighting all over the house and stuff. Yeah, and then I basically just continued that as I went along. Um, scripted out each page and then added a visual next to it and then as I got further in the book I wanted to do, like develop like communication of how does the Mooners, can the Mooners talk, can they not talk, how does that work and then my initial idea was because they are, are, are beings of light they could communicate through holograms and that's kind of where I got this idea from Star Wars where I would create um, a communication pattern where, where Ray, the initial idea was Ray would narrate what they want to say. So you would know what the Mooners are talking about and Ray would say like, oh, do you want, oh, do you mean I should do X, Y, and Z? Um, and that's how you know what they're saying through Ray um, because he can interpret the holograms quite well. That was my initial idea, but I changed it as, as I developed the story. Yeah, I just made a note, I still need to type out the last few pages of the other world um, because um, you'll see um, through the storyboards how far I kind of like got and then I kind of like stopped at one point. So this is where I'm going to continue now. So yeah, so storyboarding, which is usually the most fun part if you've done everything else. I enjoy this part the most. Um, so you have your script, you basically just write it down. You scamp out what you want each scene to look like. So you can see I basically just scammed out each scene. Um, and then this, I copied copied that slide and you can see the ones that I completed, I just put over there. So this is just like my first sprint in terms of like creating all of this, my first draft. Um, <clears throat> I am changing the art style slightly. So I'm actually, I actually started from over. So I'm starting from slide one and I'm working my way back through all of these pages. So I'm kind of starting from scratch because the story did change slightly and um, things developed over time. And then just, just an idea of some of the other pages before he goes to the other world. So here you can see a slide 22, um, how they are communicating with him about the evil monsters in their world and how they need help, etc. And then here you can also see them lowering the cat with laser lights, which they, that was the initial idea, but I kind of like took that out because I found a better way of doing it. So you can see once I was done with my, my first set of, of um, storyboarding, I kind of had some things to think about because the story wasn't like working the way I wanted it to work. So I just made some notes here. And some people mentioned to me on Twitch, like um, there's no need for adults if they don't play a vital role in the story. So I was gonna add like Ray's parents into the book initially, but then I just felt like, we felt like it didn't really add any value to the story. So why? spend my time designing the parents and all of that if they're not really going to add value to the story so we just kind of like scrapped them which was a good de design decision because it would have added more characters and take more time and then um plot driven writing so i was just reading up about um uh, techniques of like how to move my story forward so events need to take place in order to move the story forward not necessarily the character <clears throat> so certain things happen and that kind of like drives the story forward. So that's kind of how I wrote. Then I was like also concerned about the, the way the, the Mooners communicate. Um, so do they speak English? Um, if not, if they communicate, if they don't do that that way, then um, how would they communicate? So could they communicate using 
iconography, holograms. So I did like think obviously at that point like I wanted to use light because they are creatures of light. And then the story developed and I thought, oh I have a I have a cat there, maybe the cat can understand him, so maybe um, animals in the other world can translate the moon's speech, which was eventually what I went with. Um, um, so yeah, so in my story I kind of like made some changes as the thing developed. Then I was like thinking about, oh, do they have a gender, all of this stuff, not that it really matters to kids, but like, I, I was kind of like thinking about it, like does it make logical sense that these creatures do? Um, and then I thought about like ants, like it would make my life easier if I just have one female or one male instead of like having like a whole lot of different genders. Um, so I thought like making the royal monarch female like in mimic ants or do I even need to uh, add gender? But then I thought like down the line, um, the, the, the main character, the main mooners, because they're all like generic mooners, but then there's like a few of them that like stand out in the story. And I did kind of want them to have a little bit more personality. Um, so I did kind of give them gender eventually. Not that it really um, was mentioned, but I like, I was like thinking about those things. Yeah, because I wanted a female character. That's one of the reasons why I had a gender. So like the, the main villain um, uh, is female, but like there's a, uh, the, yeah, she and she's Ray's age and all of that. So that was kind of the reasons of why gender was like a thing in my mind. Like, do I create it in this in this um, world and all of that? But yeah, I did eventually add it. Um, yeah, and then here are some like visuals of like how I drew my pages. So you can see here initially I drew how I drew Ray's room on a single page. And then I kind of like took that page and thought, hmm. What I, how do I want these page lads to like actually look and, and what I want you to think when you look at them. So like the, so then I decided to split it into two pages. So here you'll see like focus on the raise emotion on the first page and like everything's about him. But then on the next page is all about the, the closet and focus on the closet all about. But then also thought, okay, this closet is very generic, this one. I didn't really like the way it looked. So then I kind of like redesigned the closet. Okay, I'm in the way here, but um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll put, a, I'll put a, a visual of what the closet like looks like here. And then, yeah, these are like first draws, so I, you can see, like, I don't like the way these are drawn, but yeah, a lot of these have changed, so these are just some of the other pages. Here's some more visuals, some of these I cut out completely. You can see this is just copy paste sticks, but yeah. There's some spots of me creating the day. Um, comic book style here, so I kind of like, mashed a bit of everything all into one. These are some ideas of what the, the roughs look like and before I, I didn't really flesh that ones out yet, but yeah. And that was like the, as far as I got. I think at this point, this is as far as I got. These were the last two pages that I worked on. And yeah, I think, I think at that point, um, I was still inspired, but I was quite burnt out at this point because every time I did something, it was a lot of research and research and research. Um, and I'm not that good at actually writing stories, even though I have these ideas in my head and I, and I feel like I'm good at creating stories, but actually like putting it on paper and like writing it out and creating these micro stories within the key plots is what I struggled with. But I think as I actually went through the process and, and like reading back on these now, it actually works out. and. Yeah, I think the last thing I just want to show you guys before um, we end is basically the is is basically like my timesheet to give you an idea of like how I kind of like struggle to like I got to a point where I was like struggling to develop the story and then I kind of like gave up and it kind of just died and then also got quite busy with like freelance work and all of that. But then I started writing again and I was enjoying the process and I felt like, okay, the second time around after giving it a few months away, um, actually felt a lot better. So now I'm gonna continue this process. But you can see I was actually documenting this entire process. And you can see here, like I had this idea in March last year and I kind of like designed like the character before I actually like did much writing. But then I took like quite a bit of a break and I didn't do anything for a while. 
um, yeah and then you can see you can see the process here like what I showed you guys now the slides that I showed you was like in a in a specific process but that's not necessarily how I worked I kind of like jumbled it around because you can see on the specific dates I did different stuff like I started off I had an idea of what I wanted to do then I designed like a day twice and then I did like bios and stuff and then I did a mess it around with a cover design before I even like started writing the story and stuff so you can see like I was messing around quite a lot then I did like character concepts and stuff, designed the cat, designed Ray's room. Um, later on I even designed the room in Blender because I was like struggling with certain angles and then I did it in Blender and I just traced over it. Messed around with covers again, designed the mooners, designed the, the evil mooners which are called darlings. Then I wanted to like get an idea of what the Ray's transformation looked like, what the, the villain looked like. And I was doing some research on the types of books and whether or not I was on the right track. Um, designed Ray again before I even like took things seriously. I was like constantly obsessed with like redesigning Ray. Um, cover design I was messing around. Like, then I like really got into like, okay, I'm missing, I'm wasting my time. And so for the whole of May, I was basically wasting my time just doing character design and stuff without really like sitting down and developing the story. Then I actually like really sat down and like, um, took that slides and I started like writing out the plots, writing out the scenes, designing more characters, writing more scenes, um, storyboarding everything, um, doing more research, storyboarding again. And then I started like illustrating, sitting down, illustrating and scripting again, illustrating all the way down. And until I got to the point where I like gave up in this like August last year, I kind of like gave up. And then I didn't touch it again until December this year. We are restructured and rewrote the story. Um, um, did some expression sheets and like redesigned Ray again. So if you look at the, the, the dates, you can see technically I started in March, but I don't really count because I was just having fun drawing a character and I had this idea in my head. But then like May, June, July, August, I kind of like worked on the book. So May, June, July, August, it's like roughly four months. Um, basically roughly four months to create this but you can see here yeah, different days that i've worked on it in total was 27 days so 27 conse not consecutive cons con 27 different days i actually worked on this project um and then you can see the sessions here not exactly accurate but um the sessions here you can see here that the types of times i spent on it and it's not a lot of time in one session um, like the most I spent in one session might have been four hours or three hours something but that's because most of the stuff if not everything I did on Twitch streams and my time is limited when I'm streaming because I stream during the week and all of that but yeah and then I did a small calculation here just to get an overall idea of how long this entire process took me because like I said I'm gonna document this process as I go along but yeah so the the entire process took me 82 hours in total over a span of 27 days so on average it roughly took me three hours a day for 27 days to get to the point of where i am and to get me to the point of creating everything that you see here oops yeah and that's that's pretty much where i am at this point so yeah if you made it this far to the video um I'm going to continue working on this project, uh, obviously. Um, this is just me documenting it for the first time. So I do want to kind of like create a vlog series. So this will be the first episode to like multiple episodes. And like I think I said at the beginning of this whole video, um, this process of me creating these videos will be based on how far I get as I get. So I don't know when I'll do this again. Um, but I would like to do it once a month or once every two months until the book is done um, and I'm at a point now where I'm quite positive and sure in terms of what I want to do and how I want to do it so I think it will be a lot quicker um, so yeah so to answer my question of whether or not I could create a, uh, a, a children's book in 30 days for me personally, definitely not. Even though I'm still technically under 30 days. I have three days left. Um, but yeah, no, it's a lot. It's a lot more work than I thought it was. But obviously, people that do children's book illustration have a lot more experience. And 
they have a lot more understanding of the process so this is a big learning curve for me in terms of like what do I need to do next what's the terms doing research does this make sense how do I explain this part of the story all of that stuff so yeah it was very fun I learned quite a lot throughout this entire process and I'm excited to continue it um, yeah and if you want to continue seeing me create this book and all the characters inside um, then stick around um, if you're new to the channel and you made it this far um, I'd appreciate if you can give the video a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to the channel like I always say it goes a long way and yeah hopefully I get to see you guys on the next one bye